Life as a parent is nonstop. I'm so focused on keeping my family healthy that I barely have time to take care of myself. If this sounds like you, then you need to give Symbiotica a try. Symbiotica is a health and wellness company that empowers individuals to take ownership of their health with high-quality formulas and supplements crafted to boost energy, immunity, gut health, and more. Symbiotica supplements are made with clean, natural ingredients, and they don't contain any toxins or artificial ingredients. Because they were designed for us, busy parents. They're quick and easy to take. Just a daily dose for your energy, immune system, and overall well-being. It's made staying consistent so much easier. And the best part? Symbiotica is having their holiday sale, so now's the perfect time to put your health in the driver's seat. Head to Symbiotica.com for 20% off with code GIFT20. That's C-Y-M-B-I-O-T-I-K-A.com with code GIFT20 for 20% off. Your health transformation journey starts now. Symbiotica Natural and Organic Supplements. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat podcast. Now, here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. We're for sure not going to hang this on Bill Howard because uh, I think he's continuing to improve. I thought he made some really good throws. We have to be better for him, and we have to be better uh, with a lot of the things that we're doing offensively. I mean, we got to block better. we got to catch ball better. We've got to uh, do a lot of different things. And, and maybe there's a, a throw or two that Will wishes he had back. Um, that's every quarterback in the country. And the one thing that I'm not worried about is Will's confidence, Will's any of that stuff. This kid's, this kid's got that it factor, and uh, uh, he, he'd be just fun. That was Coach Chris Kleiman following Kansas State's very, very disappointing 37-10 loss at West Virginia on Saturday. Tim Fitzgerald, Brian Hanley, the former Kansas State offensive lineman, and this is the Powercat Postgame Podcast pre- presented by Caddyshack Golf. Caddy with two Ts, visit Caddyshack Golf for all of your officially licensed golfing, willy apparel, accessories, and more Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. And I just saw that they got some new Callaway stuff in that looked pretty good. But sadly, Brian, they don't have our size. <laughs> hey, apparently, we don't fit the, the typical demographic of your golfer. Unbelievable. Well, K-State didn't fit the demographic of a team that is leading a major conference in the standings. Whew. That was awful, and that was awful from almost the beginning when Will Howard just looked out of sorts on the first possession, throws an interception, ended up with three interceptions on the day. But as Chris Kleiman said at the top of the show, don't you dare lay this at Will Howard's feet. There was enough blame to go around, and there certainly was. This thing got out of hand in the second quarter, and even though K-State scored late in the first half, Brian, uh, as soon as that third quarter started, West Virginia started back in on Kansas State, and the whooping commenced. Uh, when you're on a team, you didn't have many of these when you played at K-State, but when you're on a team and things go south like this, it, just, uh, it has to feel like you're just out of control. There's nothing you can do to correct the problems. Yeah, it, I mean, it got bad early. Uh, it, but it, it, just like Coach said, you can't blame this all on the quarterback. No, he didn't play well at all, but – he also got zero help. I mean, from anybody, from anybody, offense, defense, special teams, coaching. This was a bad, bad outing. Uh, I'm not going to say that the guys didn't compete because they were out there playing. They just didn't play well. There's a difference between playing hard and playing well, and they just did not play well. Got beat up, to be quite frank with you. Got beat up. Yeah, it was one of those days when even when – it's the fourth quarter, and they're trying to just make something happen. West Virginia is just laying licks on them. The kind of yep. stuff they did to Kansas last week, and and that's how lopsided it felt. It, it didn't get completely out of hand, but uh, it wasn't in doubt. Once West Virginia went down and took that opening kickoff of the second half and put some points on the board, uh, I think K-State was done, Brian, in hindsight. I, I you know was still holding on to mathematical hope there, but – they just didn't seem like it was a functional day on the football field at all for this team, and it really did start on offense. West Virginia, to yeah. its credit, shut down Deuce Vaughn. Briley Moore gets hurt 
in the game, and uh, we don't know his status other than the fact that Chris Kleiman said his back had locked up and they didn't want to risk it. I think he probably just has a really badly bruised back and he'll be okay. But uh, you take those guys out, you neutralize them, and boy, Will Howard was trying to find things to work. And outside of the one touchdown pass to Malik Knowles, yes, Malik Knowles in the second quarter to get K-State uh, some more points before halftime. Nothing really worked for this offense. People are blaming the play calling. Uh, Brian, I just think West Virginia's defense on this day was far better than K-State's offense. Didn't matter if it was play calling, execution. Uh, West Virginia just physically whooped K-State's butt. Yep. It was just, I'm not going to say that the play calling helped because it definitely didn't help, but K-State physically, so it would, like I said, physically got beat up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They just said, we are going to be the more physical football team, and we're going to let you know it on every single snap. And they did. They did. We weren't ready. It's like we weren't ready for it. Part of that is getting your guys ready for it. Part of that is leadership showing up. You know, they smacked us in the mouth and we had no response. It's almost like they thought, well, we came back against Oklahoma. We'll come back against West Virginia. It's a different type of team. Oklahoma doesn't play defense. We know that. They haven't played defense in years. West Virginia is playing defense. The West Virginia is flying around and smacking people in the mouth. And they came out. We should have known that from the very first snap. It was just an old-fashioned butt whooping. And I don't want everybody to, to – everybody should take the blame. I don't want this to be a – let's blame it on the offense or the defense or the coach. It's everybody got whipped in this game. Everybody. Yeah, I uh, just texted Michael Goins, one of our writers, and every Sunday morning he puts up the, the top ten players from the game, and I wished him luck. I'm like, I, I, I know that some guys played well, particularly Drew Wiley. That's the one that Coach Kleiman pointed out. The defensive tackle did have some really nice plays. I thought he was a person who won his personal battles, but there weren't many of those guys on the field. Um, offensively for K-State, they simply could not find a foundation upon which to build the entire day. Um, and we flip it over to the other side. Letty Brown going for 102 yards, I think on 24 carries for West Virginia, gave the Mountaineers that foundation that they wanted because then it opened up the play action pass. And K State players mentioned that. Boy, that play action really hurt us. The RPOs hurt us. K State's defense just got on its heels early and couldn't get off its heels and, and get off the field enough. And when they converted a long third down into a touchdown or a long completion, I should say, man, that just broke their spirits. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the name of the game is getting off the field on third down, and we literally had no answer for that. And it was just, it wasn't good to see. It, it just, let's just flat out, it just was not good to see. We didn't play well today just didn't play well. They, they did whatever they wanted on offense. They ran the ball. They pushed us around. Um, and having said all of that, it's still one game. So it's going to be hard to find bright spots out of this game, but it's still only one good one game, but it's a learning lesson for the team. It's something that we can build on. Definitely something that we can build on, even though you never want to build on getting your teeth kicked in. And the thing about it is we got our teeth kicked in, and we can absolutely pinpoint what it was, physicality. You know, it was physicality. It wasn't just, you know, hey, I wonder how this happened. Uh, we have no idea what they were doing. They were just the more physical football team. It's just plain and simple. That was it. Yeah, that is hard for any football team to admit that uh, they were outmanned on the field. They were just uh, – the other team hit harder, played harder, was more focused, more inspired. And all that went on for K-State. But as you mentioned, Brian, this is just a game. Arkansas State yep. was a game, and they ended up beating Oklahoma and then winning three other games. In hindsight, those are three not very good teams, although TCU is trashing Baylor as we speak right now. Um, they can just put this behind them and bounce back and get back to business. And I don't know if that's easy to do or hard to do after a game like that, but brother, they got to do it. They got to get on to Oklahoma State next Saturday. Yeah, um, I mean, look at the film. 
and get on to Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State is going to present some of the same type of challenges, except they're going to be more explosive. So um, they, they're going to be more explosive. They're going to be physical. So we've just got to figure out the same thing that, that popped up. This is another thing that popped up that we had mentioned that we were going to need them to start playing better. Again, the wide receivers, just drop pass after drop pass, just not being able to get any separation. You know, this was a game where, hey, we need you guys. And we talked about it. We need, we're going to need you guys to do some stuff. We're going to need you guys to, to be there. And they weren't there today. They just weren't there. Couldn't get open. No separation. Uh, now, we'll, we didn't help them because we threw the ball late several times. But and this was just a bad game. But just get rid of it and let's move on. Yeah, Will Howard throws a pick six among his three interceptions. But it wasn't a perfectly thrown ball. But that ball hit Sebastian Taylor right in the hands and ricocheted yeah. to a – a West Virginia player for the touchdown. That was kind of day it was. Um, you know, and credit West Virginia. They did a really good job on making sure special teams didn't pick up K-State. They didn't have an opportunity. K-State never had the opportunity to really get back emotionally into the game like they often do because of a special teams play. There was a couple close calls. I thought K-State was maybe on the edge of making something happen at one point, but – it never did break loose. K State gets absolutely run over in this game. Uh, I'm honestly, Brian. I'm, I'm kind of struggling to find anything to talk about because there was nothing really positive to talk about. I thought even West Virginia, when K State got West Virginia in the longer passing situations, and K State went to the speed rush package. Too often, West Virginia took advantage of that. I just felt like West Virginia's coaches were one step ahead of K State's coaches most of the day. Yeah, they were. We got out coached. Um, I, again, tough pill to swallow because the coaching staff's done a great job all year, but today was not our day. I don't know if they thought we were going to be able to do the certain things on offense or defense. I don't know what it was, but we couldn't do those things. It was just a bad game plan. Um, it was the game plan was not, you know, it, it we didn't. We didn't use the game plan to our advantage. I thought we had a decent drive early in the game. When, when we went down the field, we had to settle for three. But I thought that that was a drive that, okay, we've got some stuff here. Yeah. We never went back to it. We didn't mix things up. It was like we and we gave up on the run game, I thought, way too early. I know we got behind, but you know what? You can still run the football down 14 points in the first half. And we gave up on that way too early. Or, hey, we're just going to run it on first down, and then we're going to throw it. I'm like, we're being way too predictable. It was just a bad day. And, you know, it's it's there's nothing wrong with just, hey, you know what? Let's just chalk it up. Because if we're, we're going to sit here all day, all night, and all next week trying to figure out, what case they good in this football game. It just didn't happen today. Yeah. It just did not happen today. And we just have to admit that that's fine. One game we played bad. Okay. And they took it to us. You know, we played bad and they took it to us. That's what good teams do. Just like we do. If a team plays bad against us, we're going to take it to them. And that's what happened today. Let's push it aside. Let's move on and let's go get, let's go get next week. Cause again, Next week, the team is better. Yeah, they're more phys they're physical, and they're going to be more explosive. So let's get to the drawing board. Let's put together a different type of game plan, and let's figure that out. Because next week, although we didn't play well today, we can play well next week and win. Yep, indeed. Uh, Luddy Brown was very good. I mean, he is a strong yes. guy. He's going to be an NFL running back. Uh, he kind of fits the league pretty well. But you know what? Chuba Hubbard's even better at Oklahoma State. And you yes. know what? Brees Hall at Iowa State a couple more weeks down the road uh, yes. is, is even better. Uh, so whatever happened today in stopping the run game, they better find some solutions to it. But for me, it really started, Brian, this team didn't tackle well. And for the nope. last four Big 12 games, this team has tackled well. And that just told me they weren't locked in from the very start of this game. Absolutely. You could see it. They didn't tackle well. And it was almost like, hey, we've always tackled well. Guys weren't running to the football either, Tim. That's another thing is that, hey, we've tackled well all year. He'll bring them down. Well, guys didn't bring them down. And instead of having other guys there, we didn't have guys there. And you could just see it. You could see it. It just 
It was a recipe for disaster. You're not going to tackle well. You're not going to run to the football. They're being more physical than we are. It was just a recipe for disaster, and it all just came crashing down in this game. So, um, yeah, it, it just wasn't a good football game for us. It literally just was not a good football game. We will get to Wabash Station questions after the break, but I want to start off with one right here. Uh, someone asked, uh, does K-State drop completely out of the rankings from 16 to to out? I don't think that happens, but I do think they'll drop a long ways because this was an awful day. And, and, you know, honestly, I haven't looked around college football enough to know if there's enough teams playing well enough to displace K-State. It's not just about K-State. Everyone else is kind of in – in a just a weird season where people aren't putting it all together. This team should be ranked for next week's game. I, I can't imagine they'll drop from 16 to 26 or worse. Yeah, I don't think they're going to drop out, but they're going to be in the mid-20s. So, yeah, I would say a 23, a 24, somewhere in that range. I mean, like, hey, guys, let's just be honest. This was not a good performance to put on tape. It just wasn't. This was a bad football game for us. And, you know, we don't get the, the the respect that sometimes we deserve anyway. And then when you go lay an egg, expect that egg to crack. And they are going to, you know, they're, they're not going to – anybody – this game was on national TV. So anybody that watched is going to say, well, how good is Kansas State really when they play some decent competition? Because it's kind of what you said earlier, the teams that we played outside of OU, I mean, I still, still believe OU is a good football team. But the other teams are just not very good football teams. So who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I wouldn't let it, you know, get in the way either way. We, I mean, whether we're ranked or we're not ranked, we got to be ready to play football next week. Uh, yes, indeed. 37 to 10. West Virginia wins the day in Morgantown. Letty Brown, 24 carries, 102 yards. Jarrett Deggie, 22 of 34 for 301. On the K-State side, Will Howard, 19 of 37, 184 yards, but those three interceptions, including a pick six. And Deuce Vaughn, finally someone bottled him up, nine carries, 22 yards, and he wasn't a big part of the passing game. As I mentioned, Bradley Moore also was injured in this game, so he left total yardage, 485 to 225 for Kansas State. Time of possession, West Virginia basically 34 to 26. Both teams are four and two on the season. K State is four and one in Big Twelve. West Virginia drops to three and two on the con- in conference play. And right after this break, we'll start taking your questions from Wabash Station. This is the Powercat Post Game Podcast, sponsored by Caddyshack Golf. As we go to break, let's hear again from Kansas State coach Chris Kleiman. This was a loss against a very good West Virginia team. An even better team, Oklahoma State, awaits next week. And then after an off week, K-State goes to Iowa State. Life will not get easier for his Wildcats. Here's Coach Kleiman. We need to be better. Uh, We need to tackle better. We need to hit our fits better. And and you guys are right. We we know the gauntlet that's in front of us. We know what's in front of us with Uh, teams that have really good running backs, teams that have really good quarterbacks, teams that have really good defenses. It's called the Big 12, and we've just got to continue to improve. And and, uh, and we're excited about what our start was, but by no means did we relax and think, boy, we've arrived. Our our kids don't feel that way. They've never felt that way. We just have to be better. And and today, a better team beat us, and we know down the line we're going to face some really talented teams coming up. The PowerCat Podcast will be right back. My days working, taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. 
And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available, where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. We now send it back to the PowerCat podcast. Welcome back to the PowerCat postgame podcast. Tim Fitzgerald and the former offensive lineman Brian Hanley from down at our uh, Go Powercat headquarters in Frisco, Texas. I just named re- yes, sir. I renamed your house, sir, headquarters. I like it. Okay. <laughs> hey, if we're going to have a headquarters in Texas, it's going to be in Frisco, damn it. I like that town. So <laughs> All it right. works well for me. <laughs> we are sponsored by Caddyshack Golf. For K-Staters, by K-Staters, jackets, hats, polos, T-shirts, golf accessories. Caddyshack Golf Wear, Caddy with two T's. Visit caddyshackgolf.com. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. They have all kinds of cool stuff. If you want to go ahead and uh, get some winter golfing gear. It was a day where you could have played golf in Morgantown and maybe K-State should have headed to the Lynx uh, instead of going to the football field because uh, well, they, if they'd gone to the links, they probably wouldn't hit the ball. They didn't hit much else on this day. Uh, it Oof. was just a horrible day, Brian Hanley. And let's move on to some questions from Wabash Station. And Salt Hawk Cat wants to know this. Was West Virginia's defense really that good, or was K-State incompetent on offense? It was both. It was both. I mean, they have a good defense. Let's not kid ourselves. Their defense is really good. So that's something to to take in or to keep in mind, you know, as you're progressing, looking at how we played. Their defense is really good, but we didn't help ourselves. We had opportunities. You got to get separation as receivers. You got to stay on blocks as offensive linemen. You got to throw the ball on time as a quarterback. You got to make the right play calls and put your guys in position as a coaching staff. None of those things happened. So if you're going to play against a good defense and you're not going to do those things, don't look to have a whole lot of success. And we didn't have a lot. So, yes, they have a really good defense, but we also were very inept in everything that we did. It's not often that you can say that in a football game, but we were really inept at everything we did. So you put those two together, bad football for K-State, really bad. On the offensive side, you look at the defensive side, they just they physically – it was just a physical mismatch. So, but just talking offense and what their defense does, like the question asked, that was the difference. Is that they're good, we didn't help. Nope, those Stills brothers, man. I tell you what, if you can go out on the recruiting trail and get a couple brothers like that that play the defensive line, yeah. that'll make you a lot better. They are the real deal. Absolutely, absolutely. They played, and uh, they. I mean, they just they caused havoc just caused havoc uh but it was more than them i mean their dbs played well i mean their their defensive coaching staff had those guys prepared they had them prepared and playing very 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 physical and very good football very fundamentally sound football indeed you know brian this team seemingly has done a good job with the next man up philosophy after that arkansas state game when they were missing so many players after that they just appeared to kind of Accept it, that it's part of this season, and maybe the number one guys won't be playing sometimes because guys get hurt in football, guys get uh, held out because of COVID in this weird pandemic season. But I thought today, and uh, heard as Joe ask about this, A.J. Parker being out at Nickelback really hurt K-State, and I see a question on down there about Kansas State's safety play. I thought Nickelback and safety today – uh, was as poorly played as it's, as it's been since that Arkansas State game. They missed A.J. Parker. I thought they missed him a lot, and they missed him as much as I think they've missed anyone being out this season. Absolutely. I mean, you could truly tell a difference between him being out there and not being out there. They missed him. Just guys being around, being where they're supposed to be. And who knows? I mean, it looks like he gets guys in the right position, lets everybody know the coverages, flying around to the football, making tackles that guys were not making today. He was missed. Got to get him back. Got to get him healthy. Got to get him back because it's just – it was not good today. And as far as the safety play, I mean, we might as well not have safety on the football field today. I'll be honest with you. 
It, 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 it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Got to have way more athleticism back there if we're going to compete. Or they have to just continue to play better. This is just a bad outing, really bad outing uh, by safety play, just by everything. And I don't want to beat on kids. That's not my thing. I don't want to beat on kids. But I also have to be honest. We just didn't play well. And the places we didn't play well, it showed up. So it, it was just a – got to be more athletic. If we're not going to be athletic, we at least have to be in the right spots. And we weren't even in the right spots today. No, it was really bad. Woodstock Cat – uh, ask this, the college, the motto of the college football season seems to be upsets and blowouts. It was K-State's turn for a blowout, and he wants some reasons for optimism throughout the rest of the season. And Brian, I, I get his point. It's going to get a lot tougher the next two games. Oklahoma State next week in Manhattan, take a week off, thankfully, and then go to Iowa State. That will really probably set the rest of this course on uh, the rest of the season on its course. You win one of those, particularly if you can beat Oklahoma State, which right now as we sit here seems like an absurd thing to say, but um, you can bounce back and, and get it done. If you win that game, you're, you're amazingly still in the mix for a Big 12 championship appearance if you can take care of business. Incredible to say, but give Woodstock Cat some reasons for optimism looking forward. Well, the optimism is we've seen them play well. You know, we, we've seen them play play well. I, I mean, if we struggled all year, then, that okay, the optimism shouldn't be there. I mean, but let's just, you know, let's be a little more realistic. I mean, we've played well. Now, I know it wasn't against the, the best teams in the country, but you always don't have – I mean, you can only play who's on your schedule. So at this point in the season, we've played well against good teams or against a few good teams that we played. Now, today was not one of those. I, I will readily admit, How, having said that, the coaching staff did an excellent job from week one to week two. It couldn't have been a better coaching job from week one to week two. Losing and playing as poorly as we did against Arkansas State to going and beating OU at OU. Again, I'm not here to tell you that OU is world beaters, but I still believe OU is a pretty good football team. So the optimism should be there because, like I said, we've played well. We've seen our guys play well. And if we're going to play and we're going to compete and get the coaching staff gets the guys to compete and everybody's bought in, then we'll, we'll be there at the end. We're going to compete. We're going to compete and win some football games again. We just – where did we think we were going to be after Arkansas State? Heck, I was one of them. I didn't know we'd win a game. I just thought, oh, well, this is terrible. Well, let's let's pump the brakes a little bit. It was one game. One game. Give the guys, uh, the coaching staff and the players, give them a little latitude here and allow for them to get better. Because, again, this is a week-by-week week thing. It always has been. It always will be. Just keep getting better. If they can continue to get better, things will turn for us. This was one game. It wasn't five games in a row. It was one. Let's 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 not go down that road. I've seen too many times where K State fans we get play a bad game and we think, oh well, that's the end of it. No, no, no. This was one game. Let's relax. Let's relax. Well said, uh, Snarecat Three. What other goals should this team strive to achieve? Uh, if the championship's off the table. It's not at this point because of that win no. with Oklahoma and still with another game with Texas ahead. Uh, like I said, you you beat uh, Oklahoma State or Iowa State, and you're in pretty good position if you win the rest of the games. But you brought that up. After that Arkansas State game, Brian, I'm thinking this is a 1-9 and nine season. They're going to beat Kansas. They might beat Tech at home. Maybe it's 2-7, and seven, you know, 2-8 yeah. season. They are four and one in the Big Twelve after this pitiful performance. Four yes. and one with four to play. They won five games in the conference last year, so I think uh, they almost certainly will at least match that, even if they come apart. I think Baylor is not a very good football team. In fact, I'm watching TCU just absolutely. You think K State had a bad day? Yeah. Baylor, <laughs> they're they're still in the first half and they're down thirty to nothing at home. So it's it's going really south on Baylor. Uh, Texas coming up in December seems like a winnable game. We'll see if Texas, uh, how they proceed through the rest of the season. There's still a lot on the table. 
and still so much progress you can gain for this program out of a pandemic season that at, you know, early September, mid-September when they played Arkansas State, I didn't think those things were available. That's all still available, Brian. They can yep. win six games in the Big 12 Conference, and nobody is going to get away with telling me that's disappointing. No, not one single person should be able to get away with that. You're exactly right. So I just, we're right there. We're right there today. I get it. I get it. The skies have fallen, but you know what? The skies will rise tomorrow. Not even next week. They will literally rise tomorrow. So it will be okay. We just have to get back to playing our football the way that we know how, you know, just coach better play better, prepare better, everything. Just get better and go out and compete again. We're right in the middle of this thing. Let's not get love hope. It was one bad football game. We're right there. And again, the ball bounces here or there, and we win next week, and who knows what can happen? Who knows? This is college football. That's why we all love it so much, Tim, is because it's college football. You know, professional football, there's not so many upsets. Upsets happen rarely. I mean, in college football, upsets happen every single week, and that's why we love it. We're not going to be favored next week. We're not going to be favored the week after that. But you know what? That, that we have a chance. I do know that. We have an opportunity to win. I go, because it's college football. That's why we love it, and that's why we watch. K-State's right in the middle of this thing. Let's not give up on it yet. Last Saturday, Michigan State lost at home to Rutgers. Yes, yeah. Rutgers. This Saturday, they go to Ann Arbor and beat their rivals on their home field. So you're right. This is just a whacked season. Uh, but you still have to go out and execute. And KG yes. Man ask a really good question here. Is it time to find a way to get more playmakers on the field? Maybe try to get Mosey and Vaughn out there together. Just It seems like you West Virginia kind of contained the weapons that they had. And you said it earlier. They just don't have enough weapons. The receivers aren't scaring anyone right now. You have to do it. At some point, it, we've got to say, okay, if you're going to be on our football team and you're a participant on our football team and you can make plays, we have to put you on the football field, okay? We can't go into games thinking, okay, well, you can't do this. You haven't done that. You can't do it. Look, let's go win. Let's just go win football games. And that's one of the things that, that kind of gets frustrating is, hey, I know there's guys that play this position that are more athletic and more explosive that can be on the football field. I, then maybe they don't know every single play in the playbook, but they know enough. And if they don't know enough, coaches, it's your job to get them to know enough. I go, but you got to get those guys on the football field as much as possible so that we can be as explosive as we can on offense. Again, I know I've harped on this before, and I don't want to be – the bad guy, but that's what the big boys do. They all play the, their most explosive play. It doesn't matter if it's our first day on campus. If you can go out and make a play, we will put you out there to make a play for us. K-State has to be that too. We have to get in that mindset. we got to start doing it. Yep, indeed. Uh, DM Orcats ask, uh, do they, how, how much better do they need the safeties to play? Uh, they, that, you know, I don't. You said it earlier about this. I don't like to throw kids under the bus, but the safeties were awful. They were just they yeah. got taken advantage of in the passing game. I mean, yeah. when Jared Daggy's thrown for three hundred on you, you've done something horribly wrong on the back end. Yeah, they they couldn't keep up with the guys. They weren't in position again. If you're not going to be the most athletic guy, you at least need to be able to recognize plays and be in the right position. And if you're not going to be that, then you can't be out there. You got to at least put somebody out there that's way more athletic. So if they make a mistake, they can make up for it. But yeah, they, they've got to play way better. And that was just, I mean, again, it's like you said, West Virginia's quarterback should not be throwing for that many yards. My goodness. And, it, and guys were running free. I mean, it wasn't like we were tight man coverage and he's just put the ball on a dime. The, the guys are just running free all over the place. It was pathetic. It was just a bad football game. It just, well, I know I keep saying it. And I know people are going to get tired of hearing it, but it was really, it was just a bad football game. Yeah, yes, indeed. Uh, I, you said it. I it, 
we can sit here for another half hour and try to explain what happened in Morgantown, but that ain't happening because K-State wasn't very good, and we saw it all around. We see it all around college football this season. Wildcat Pilot 88, it's not really a question, but I thought it was a good observation. Clearly on this Halloween, Clemson and West Virginia switched jerseys because, boy, Clemson got a scare at home without Trevor Lawrence, at quarterback, barely beating Boston College. Uh, and West Virginia turned into Clemson today. They looked totally dominant. I think I got to say this. I, I think West Virginia with Neil Brown's on exactly the right course. I think yep. West Virginia today showed me more than than I saw at any point with the previous coaching staff, and that included some pretty decent teams in in Morgantown. This team was more complete. This team is uh, less gimmicks. Uh, Have they had their stumbles this season? Absolutely. Did they look bad in the first half against Kansas? Absolutely. But there's something about this team. They're physical. They execute. They've got enough weapons on offense. And, boy, when you're good on the front four on defense, you're pretty good. Uh, And they were today. So just tip your hat to West Virginia and move on. And and I, Oklahoma State, which uh, is currently playing Texas and trying to stay unbeaten in the conference, just do what you can do, Brian. That's what that's what yep. this pandemic's all about. I don't care if it's football or life. Accomplish what can be accomplished uh, and feel good about your successes. And, you know, on the bad days, you just got to put them in your hip pocket and move on. That's exactly right. Just, just move on. I mean, this just wasn't a good day today. Let's figure it out and let's move on and let's go win this one next week. You know, Brian, when we go to those fancy five-star restaurants that we'd like to go to um, – Uh, between courses they give you a little sherbet to clear your palate i need about a gallon of sherbet to clean cleanse my palate after this one and so that we can move on to other days and we're just going to do that we're going to tuck this in the back pocket move on and call it good for this power cap post game podcast brian i appreciate it next week we'll gather again we'll talk about what it takes to beat oklahoma state a big challenge ahead for kansas state But, folks, a challenge they can meet by playing a little bit better football. Well, a lot better football than they did today in Morgantown. Brian, any final thoughts? Yeah, I I just – I don't want people to be so down. It was a bad game. We harped on it. It was a bad football game. But I I just believe that our coaching staff is just better. I think we just ran into a really good football team today. That's one thing that I think that's kind of going – um, unnoticed. I think West Virginia is just better than what people think they are. I, be- I believe it. I wholeheartedly believe it. It's what you mentioned earlier. They are on the right. They made a great hire. He's got his plan in place. They're a physical football team. We just didn't match that today. But I, I think the-, the the season, I believe that we're on the right path as well. We just had a stinker today. It happens. It happens. And then especially in this crazy season, Hey, you're allowed a stinker from time to time. So let's just move on. Let's just not let this week beat us next week. That's the key. I mean, that's an old Coach Snyder thing, but it holds true. Do not let one week beat you the next week. And that's what the guys just have to do. So true indeed. When they went to hire someone to replace Bill Snyder, the final two candidates were Chris Kleiman and Neil Brown. Neil didn't get the job in Manhattan, but he did get it in Morgantown, and I think both programs got the coaches they need to move ahead, and I think this is going to kind of turn into a pretty good little rivalry because I know this, Chris Kleiman probably isn't very happy about being 0-2 against Neil Brown after two games in Manhattan. That has got to stick with him. I'm Fitz, and he's Brian Hanley, the former K-State offensive lineman, 97-98 teams for the Wildcats and we will talk to you next week with the Pyrocat pregame show and then of course the postgame podcast following the Cats and Cowboys in Manhattan. Powercat podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set lost car found there it is get complimentary class leading blue link plus call 562-314-4603 for complete details